You were in possible talks to play Eddie Murphy, or, or, excuse me, uh, Richard, Richard Pryor, Pryor, right? Yeah, I was gonna play Richard Pryor, man, and then uh, his wife. I didn't, I didn't screw his wife, his ex-wife, and she got mad. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna play Richard. You didn't spank this ass. <laughs> I said, nope, I ain't playing Richard Pryor again. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, she going to sue me for this. You're going to people's court, nigga. <laughs> people's court. People's court. I ain't don't, no don't, 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 don't. Don't. Today. Today. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to show. No, no. Uh. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, man, but but I, you know what? It was I. I went to Richard Pryor's funeral, man, and none of his friends got up there and talked about him. Paul Mooney, none of them people went up there to talk about him, bro. Monique went up there on the stage. She didn't know him, and George Lopez went on the stage. He didn't know him. He wasn't even in the casket. The casket was shut. We all in there crying. She didn't burn them up somewhere. This the shit that we was going through. Diana Ross just stood up right in the middle of the prayer and just started. Ah! Ooh, I swear to God, I'm not bored. Hey, I can't tell you a lie. She just started singing like, oh. Ah! She had a big ass hat with a net on her shit. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and guess what? <laughs> Nigga, I get on the stage, right? Uh, I'm on the stage. Uh, I'm coming down because I've been on coke for two, three nights. <laughs> <laughs> they think I'm crying for Richard, but I'm crying because I've been high all night. His kids is sitting there crying, man. So his, so when I seen his kids crying, uh, I start crying because it just made, I'm like, damn, that's their dad. Uh, let me tell you something, bro. The lady told me that night, you're not ready to play Richard. I said, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> I'm kiss my motherfucking ass. I sit up here. But I, you know what I told him, though? You know what I told her? No, I'm going to tell you some real shit. I'm going to tell you what I told her, Steve and Matt. I told her, look here. Steven. I love Richard Clyde. I love him to death. But my kids don't know who he is. Mm. But the little motherfuckers know me. Mm -hmm. So I'm the motherfucking, I'm the, as good as Richard Pryor was, he was a bad motherfucker. These kids, they know who the hell Mike Epps is. And I, that's my OG, I love him. But the time has moved on. So if you go see a Richard Pryor movie with me in it, you're going to see Mike Epps play Richard Pryor. Right. Now, for all the old heads that know Richard Pryor, they're going to be coming in there like, yeah, nigga, you better come on with that mud bone, nigga. You better do that shit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But my age and the kids, the kids younger than me, they don't know who, they say Mike Epps is playing a comedian on there. I'm going to see this shit. That's how, that's, 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 how that's, that's yeah, it. that's where we at. They're going to say Day Day, too. They're going to kill me with Day Day. Day Day. The current state of uh, comedy right now. Um, what you think about it with the cancel culture and everybody being so sensitive to jokes and things like that? What's your opinion on it? Well, you know, I think as a comedian, you really gotta, you gotta weigh your odds. You know, you got, you got one level of it that makes sense. Every level of it makes sense, but you got a, a group of guys over here that are you think about Dave Chappelle. You think about Cat Williams. You think about guys like Corey Hoker. These dudes are fearless, man. These dudes ain't, they ain't thinking like I'm thinking. See, I'm over there, they over there saying everything I want to say. But I can't mess my money up because I got a different, I know how to act. Yeah, you got in a, a movie. You're yeah. a different lane. I know right. how to, yeah, I know how to do TV. Right. I know how to produce. Right. So I'm over there looking and trying to protect that. Right. That don't have nothing to do with that. Now, if I take that lane right there, it might yeah. cut that off. Right. 
Because you don't see none of them dudes. Like in, real crossing over. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Not that they can't do it. Right, right. they just not. It's not. But they got a heart of a lion when it comes to this game. Mm -hmm. You know, them guys are, I'm telling you, they fearless, man. They go up there and say, you know, so I'll say some crazy stuff, but Lord Jesus, they go hard. And I just sit back with my popcorn. I'm like, boy, they got a whole lot of heart, man. And it works for them. They sell yeah, absolutely. tickets like a mother. Absolutely. Has, has, the genre, has the genre suffered because of this, because of everybody being so sensitive? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a, you know, when you think about Richard Pryor and uh, Red Fox and Bernie Mac and them kind of guys, man, they wouldn't have made it in this time, you know? They would have probably just walked away from the game because it's a damn shame that you're allowed to do it in a different area and you're not allowed to do it in the area that is really you supposed to be doing it at. Comedians are supposed to be able to say whatever we want to say and crack a joke. I mean, to a, to, a, to a respect, you know what I'm saying? You ain't got no business talking about no kids and certain stuff you can't say, period. It, even with a joke, it'll get you up out of here. Like some comedian, he was just talking about George Floyd. I don't know who it was. Yeah, um, David Faison, he, he called, he apologized. Yeah, that. they could have got an ass whooping. That came with you know, an ass whooping and a, he, a, a you, cancellation. You know he got no phone calls. He didn't apologize just because he wanted to. Yeah. You know that. But see, you're going for the laugh. You're going for the shock and you're going for the laugh. 